Hello and welcome to the day on Sunday Elite to Legend where things all go badly wrong. Today our opponents are our rivals at the top of the league, the Hulker Old Boys, who are just two points behind Leyland Albion and on a much better run. I think they're unbeaten now in something like 22 games. It's not really going to go very well for us today. In fact, we're going to lose and we're going to lose badly. So I have a strategy. We'll get to that in a second. As you can see, the teams are in front of you here. Wayne Murphy, the manager at Rakesmoor Lane. There is no assistant suggestion and I will explain why in a second. Uh, let's hope everybody raised there to their game. Tell you what, Conor Coma motivated this time. Normally, he is not so motivated. In fact, he's been so complacent in recent games that he's barely got changed and got off the bus. Well, be that as it may, we are going to encourage the team as always. We have selected a 4-1-4-1 formation this time. It's what we started out the season with before it all changed to the 4-4-2 thanks to the performances of the likes of Harry Walker and Connor Comer. As her Hulker old boys with an attack, it's there at the near post. And you will notice that Forbes is playing in central defence. That is because he's the best man marker at the club. And Hulker do have a very good striker in Dawson. He's got, I think, 20 goals for the season. So he's somebody to watch out for. Um, as there's a big strike on goal, saved by Contacos. So we're going less adventurous today. Normally we are in an attacking setting. Not going there. We are a bit further back and uh, we're playing Andy Barlow, as you can see there, as a t defensive midfielder, uh, which is a bit of a change for him. He's been playing as a deep line playmaker for most of the season, as there is a disallowed goal by Dawson. Won't count, so we're back to nil-nil on 10 minutes. So far, now I had to use my uh, inspirational comments that I've prepared. So as soon as we concede, I'll throw in one of our little inspirational um, events of recent weeks, and that will therefore keep us on a pretty uh, pretty positive mental attitude. You know, don't want to go too, uh, too down because Hulker are going to beat us and beat us badly. Uh, probably 5-0. I think that was uh, the prediction. Uh, the uh, bookies have us nowhere near getting anything out of this one. And as you can see, we are failing to get a foot on the ball. But here's Walker, back on the right this time. Uh, Coulter involved. And Walker's going round his man. Good play. And it's Coma who nods the ball over. Goal kick for Hulker. So we've survived 17 minutes so far. Barlow with the cross. Big one to the back post. Coma will recycle possession back to Coulter. Ball over the top. And it's a tame effort by Harry Walker. He'll kick himself for missing that, says the commentary. And I do concur. Actually, our XG is higher than our opponents, which is a surprise considering they've had four shots and all four have been on target. They're a really good side, the Hulker All Boys, in here in uh, the Northwest Counties Division 1 North, level 10. They've been on such a good run and we've had a few missteps in recent weeks and that has allowed them to close the gap on us. Really, they are our nearest challengers as in fact, Lower Breck, who are third in the table, have just gone behind, as you can see, to uh, Nelson, who are a pretty strong side in their own right. But there is old Diego and he slammed the ball home. Back in the side today, actually, he's missed out in recent weeks. Uh, he hasn't been playing. In fact, we played Barlow in central midfield alongside Trent Coulter. And Diego, big star at the start of the season, but has gone off the boil a little bit. And therefore, he's been sitting out playing sort of the last 20, 30 minutes, but not really having the desired effect. So back in the side and back on the score sheet, as you can see. Now, Reed, the Hulker goalkeeper, plays it forward, but it's not getting through. 
uh, as we're playing pretty well. As Coma has a strike, and there, oh, Walker with a good effort. But we are heading into half time. And we just wonder here are the Hulkers going to get a goal back before the break? There's not that long to go, and Ede is on the ball. That was a trip, wasn't it, Ref? No. They will score from this. They didn't. Dawson misses. He's rarely done that all season, I'll tell you. And it's 1-0 going into the break. This is a bit of a concern. All the things that I have noted down, ready to throw in when there are problems. We don't seem to have many problems. Uh, I'm very happy with the performance so far. Look at that. A sea of green. Not going to change anything in terms of the players. But I am just going to uh, encourage them here, as always, at the start of the half. Just to, you know, give them a bit of uh, a bit of a G up. As Nelson take a two-goal lead against Lower Breck. Fantastic. So as the season has gone on, we've established two main rivals, really. One of them being Lower Breck, who have beaten us twice. And in fact, we'll play them on Friday on YouTube. But the other one are the Hulker All Boys. They've just been pursuing. They've been relentless. They've been like some sort of Bond villain that we just can't get rid of. The odd job of level 10. They've just kept coming, kept getting results. Every time they play a big team, the likes of AFC Blackpool, AFC Liverpool, they've still come through it. They've got their win. And most of the time, it's due to that man, Dawson, up front for them. As Coulter in behind now. Coma, and it's Joshua Ede. It's 2-0 to the Albion. Am I a tactical genius? I'm fairly sure I'm not. I was just trying to make us diff more difficult to beat. But that's a great header by Ede. He's played well as well in, uh, in recent weeks, I have to say. This might be a good time then to talk about some of the positive things that have happened in recent times. In fact, before we do, let's just freshen up our side. So who's not playing very well? I'd say probably De Castro at left back. And I'm not going to take Walker off. Uh, Trent Coulter again played well recently. I think then it's going to be De Castro for Murphy. Uh, pretty similar players, really. But if De Castro's not playing well, we've got a ready-made replacement right there. As the throw-in comes in from the Hulker old boys, and Almond, he's the other big danger, you know. Takes penalties, corners, uh, free kicks for him. Set pieces, I probably should have said. And as such, we've had him on a pretty uh, a stern marking job. But there's the goal back for the Hulker old boys. Liam Mars, unexpected. So, positive time. We played Daisy Hill in the game after AFC Liverpool that was aired on Monday on YouTube. Uh, we beat them 8-2 back at Fox Lane. Six different scorers, including Lee Hughes for his first goal for Leyland Albion. So, it was a fantastic performance from our boys. 8-2. An amazing scoreline. Again, just boosting our goal difference massively. Right up there. Just going to give the lads... Uh, do you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to demand a bit more. Let's see what happens. Possibly we uh, we can see is what's going to happen next. But yeah, we played uh, just three games uh, in the time off screen. Uh, the first of which was the 8-2 win over uh, Daisy Hill. Uh, who were sort of in the lower reaches of the league, it has to be said. But I don't think anybody expected, certainly not me, expected such a dominant performance. And we're now just eight minutes, seven minutes away from recording an unlikely win against our league rivals at the top. Of course, it could all go downhill. And I think now it's time to uh, impart a few of the dark arts. Let's bring off uh, Connor Coma, who's playing OK, not got a goal today. I'm going to bring on Lee Hughes just to uh, finish things out with a bit of experience. I'm not going to make a second substitution because I'm going to let uh, Hughes get on the pitch first. Just use up some more time. Yeah, let's see. This is how we're doing it. We're going to shit out our way. It's all winning. Uh, Coulter, yeah, not having a good game, is he? 
going to bring him off uh, and bring on Wood is the player that I'm looking for. Uh, there he is. Uh, that's just going to involve moving Barlow into uh, the centre of midfield. There we go. A bit more familiar with the role there. As now we have just four minutes left. And we are on the ball. Right. Old Diego into Barlow. Wood now has it. Stanley, who's been moved out to the right, you'll notice. So in order to accommodate Jamie Forbes in the centre of defence, we had to move Stanley to right back, which isn't a position he really enjoys playing. Uh, as there's now three minutes to go in extra time. Old Diego with the corner takes his time. And it's cleared all the way up to Beddoes. Hmm. We've got seven seconds left. Three seconds. Come on. Blow the whistle, ref. Blow the whistle. Blow that whistle. Come on. Old Diego on the charge. Is he going to shoot? No. It's a throw in. And that's got to be it, hasn't it? We're 20 seconds over. Come on, ref. Let's go. We're now 40 seconds over. That's it. Murphy taking all the time in the world. Crosses the ball into the goalkeeper. And it is all over. Albion record a massive win against the Holker Old Boys. Completely unexpected. I started this video by saying it was going to go badly wrong. Oh, that was magnificent. Well done, lads. Uh, I'd probably give you a day off, but we're only part-time, so you're not going to get that. However, I can tell you that in other results, so we beat Daisy Hill uh, eight goals to two. We then went away to back up, bake up, back up, one of the two. Connor Comer and Ed A were on the score sheet there. That was at the Brian Boys Westview Stadium. Uh, we won 3-1. So a second win in succession. Hit a bit of a roadblock in St. Helens Town in our next game. That was away from home as well at Ruskin Drive. Only recorded a 0-0 scoreline. So finally, we picked up another clean sheet. Just our second of the entire season. The first one came on the very first day against Garstang. You won 5 0. It's been all the uh, big wait for us to get the second clean sheet. In other news, Connor Coma and Harry Walker have both rejected contract offers. Coma now with 44 goals for the season and 14 assists. He tops the charts in the league, both uh, columns. However, as you did see, we have no assistance at the minute. And that is because Zhao Zarco, our Portuguese uh, assistant manager, accepted an offer to become Pontefract under-23 boss. Really disappointing because he, like uh, Coma and Walker, and indeed Trent Coulter in recent weeks, rejected uh, several different contract offers and stayed with us. He stayed loyal, but finally uh, his resistance was broken and uh, chose to leave to Pontefract. Now, I will say that they are a level eight side, so it is a bit of a step up and I do suspect that they're looking at him as potentially their next manager. It does make sense. Uh, the uh, Pontefract senior team are in the pitching in Northern Premier Division 1 North Stroke West, uh, which is, uh, as I said, level eight and that's two levels above us. So obviously... Um, He's gone on to bigger and better things. I mean, I suspect that they'll have him working with the first team as well. So we are in the market for a replacement assistant manager. Whether we can get one in or not is um, is a bit of a hope, really. At this sort of level, down at level 10 as we are, you don't seem to get a lot of staff uh, that, want to, uh, that want to join in. Uh, but as you can see, this is the league table now. We are five points clear of the Holker Old Boys. Meanwhile, Nelson did us a massive favour by beating Lower Breck. That's got them down into fourth, with uh, Berry AFC taking up third place. They beat Cletor Moore by four goals to one, uh, one of the lower ranking clubs in the division, their second bottom, with Garstang only on 10 points. So, 27 played by most teams. I think there's just a couple. Uh, actually, yeah, there's a few that uh, are a bit further back. St. Helens Town have obviously had a couple postponed. Uh, unlucky for them. But we are now five points clear of the Holker Old Boys. And what's more, um, we're another five points clear. So ten in total 
um, above Berry, Berry AFC and 11 over Lower Breck. A big win for AFC Blackpool, as you can see. 6-1 over backup. So uh, there we are. We got the win over them. Three goals to one. And uh, they have uh, sort of upped the ante there. Norwich have earned promotion back to the Premier League. So it's now getting, you know, we're in April game time, uh, the 10th of April. What's happening is that a lot of the top leagues are sort of winding down now. I think the Premier League has only got five more games to play. Whereas uh, at our level, as you can see, we've got quite a few more to get in uh, due to the real life COVID impact that's been moved into Football Manager and leagues started a bit later. Um, as I say this, this very morning, uh, the A-League, which is a league that I write for, for A-League FC, has been put, pushed back another day uh, because of new restrictions in Sydney, I believe. I think it's Sydney. Uh, so the season will start with Western United taking on Adelaide, uh, two of our favourite clubs uh, here as well. So, uh, and in fact, while we're here, Let's have a quick look at Norwich's success. So they will play in the Premier League next season. This is what the Premier League table looks like. Probably a good time to do this. Liverpool leading by five points over Chelsea. Top four, the two Manchester clubs are up there with Tottenham and Arsenal rounding out sixth place in terms of European qualification. Fulham having a really good season. Uh, the sides down at the bottom, you're looking at West Brom, who this week have turned to Big Sam to get them out of the mire. Crystal Palace, who they go against all expectations under Roy Hodgson. I think they're, he's a really good manager and they don't get half the credit that they deserve. Brighton down there as well. But in the championship, there we go. Big points advantage. 14 for Norwich over Bournemouth. Playoff positions currently going to Watford, Reading, Nottingham and Stoke. But... Uh, if you look at Stoke on 64 points, I mean, anybody down to Birmingham with 11, not doing, uh, they're not out of it, are they? Then at the bottom of the league, you've got Sheffield Wednesday, who had that points deduction, Rotherham and Wickham. That's sort of to be expected, to be fair. League One, Bristol Rovers, Portsmouth and Oxford within a point of each other at the top. Sunderland aren't in the playoffs yet. Blackpool down there in 16, local side, Wigan. 21st but they've got a great opportunity there because Plymouth and Crewe are only within a point in League 2 Salford the runaway leaders 5 points over Colchester down at the bottom uh, we've got Morecambe in 19th another local side Bradford doing badly didn't expect that in 22nd and I'd love to see Harrogate survive as well I think they are a really good side at Barrow 21st so following their promotion from the National League, they look like they're hanging on. Notts County are Vanarama National League leaders. Uh, I'm surprised at that. I expected to see Stockport. Ah, fourth. There we are. Uh, they're only two points back, actually. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much as I expected. And then AFC filed four points clear with a game in hand over Geisley at the top of the Vanarama National League North. Down at the bottom, you're looking at Southport. Don't like to see that, another local side. But Chorley doing pretty well up there in ninth. They're in with a shout of the playoffs. And in the Vanarama National League South, Slough are leaders just by two points over Ebb's Fleet. Uh, so really tight league there because if you think about uh, Fylde, we're on 72 points. Slough uh, only on 59. I think everything has uh, sort of closed up a bit there. Chippenham appear to be the team most likely to get relegated. A point behind Welling. So there you have it for today. An unlikely win. And, sorry, it was a 30-game unbeaten run. Wow. We have claimed quite a scalp as we have taken all three points away at the Hulk at All Boys, ending a 30-game unbeaten run. Well... That is a successful Wednesday, and I'll see you again on Friday when we are going to play Lower Breck. So we've played them twice this season, uh, and they've beaten us both times. 4-1 in the Northwest West County's first qualifying round. We then played them in the league 
and it was this one, a 3-2 loss. Jay Colbeck, one of the top goal scorers in the division, really put us to the sword that day. And unfortunately, they are between us and the league title. So we'll play Nelson uh, off camera, and then it's lower Breck. We then, after that, I've got seven more games. So what will probably happen is, if we are in a position to get that promotion, um, we'll record the game that looks most likely to achieve it. I really hope it's AFC Blackpool, um, because I do like a, a visit to the mechanics every now and again up here in the northwest. So thank you for your time today. I will see you again on Friday. Thank you.